Have you ever wondered why some people seem to have unlimited willpower while others struggle to stick to the simplest of habits? Today we're breaking down the science of self-discipline, specifically self-determination theory, and how to master the art of staying motivated all the time. Now you might think it's literally not possible to be motivated all the time, which yes, that is true. You're not always going to feel 100% all the time. Rest is important and sometimes when you're pushing yourself too hard, Hard, it can leave you feeling burnt out. But if you're clicking on this video today, you're most likely not at that point at all. You literally cannot seem to stay motivated. And yeah, you'll get bursts of motivation here and there, but it's never something long-term and you always end up running out of steam and not actually achieving your goals. But first, if you're new here, welcome. This is the Improvement for Imbeciles podcast. I'm your podcast host, Natalie Etch, and this is where I share ways I'm getting my shit together so that you can get your shit together. My channel is designed specifically for people who are trying to navigate this online space. It's designed by someone who not only understands, but lives the Gen Z experience of growing up in an era where we have everything we want at our fingertips. Like when you really think about it, you can get whatever you want on your phone right at this moment, whether that's DoorDash, entertainment, external validation from a dating app. And while these things are great and everything, it's having a long-term effect on our attention spans. It has caused a generational problem between between Gen Z and millennials. Everyone can agree we are growing up with a whole new set of problems in which we have succumbed to our vices. Which brings me into the sponsor of today's video, Fume. Stop what you're doing right now and take a deep breath. Now imagine what that breath would be like if it was flavored. Fume is a flavored air device that is best for breaking out of bad habits by replacing it with a healthy alternative. Fume fills a void ditching a bad habit can leave. For example, let's say you're at the club with your friends and everyone is reaching for their bad habit devices and you wanna feel included. You still have something in your hand to actually feel a part of something. It is completely guilt-free. There's no batteries, no vapor, nothing that you are inhaling into your lungs except for flavored air. Something I love the most about Fume is its intentional design to help with fidgeters. If you're anything like me, I fidget with literally anything I can get my hands on. Look, there's this cute little table magnet you can literally spin it on, not to mention all of the various flavors that are so good. My favorite is a classic crisp mint, but I gotta say sparkling grapefruit is my close second, especially if you're wanting something sweeter. Something I remember about my bad habit days is I love to have something in my hand, kind of like that hand to mouth connection. This literally does that for me and it also helps me fit in with my friends when obviously they're all out of the club, they all have their bad habits. That's okay, they're doing what they're doing, but I'm gonna be doing what I'm doing. Let's try that breath one more time. So refreshing. Scan the QR code on the screen to get a free fume topper on me. Okay, on me. Just order a journey pack, I got you, okay? Go to tryfume.com slash etch, that's F-U-M, and use code etch to get your flavored air today, bestie, okay? We're done with the bad habits. This holiday season, choose to give the gift of a better habit to your friends and family. I know we all have that one friend always doing that. It's the perfect addition to make your gift even more special. Not to mention, you might also win a limited edition gold-plated device. So you know how cool you would look if you just had this but gold? Try fume.com slash etched or scan the QR code on the screen. Okay, back to the regular scheduled programming besties. Breaking bad habits is as simple as putting your mind to it. That's a lie. Okay, let's all be honest here. That is a bold face lie that people tell you. Breaking bad habits is genuinely hard, but discipline is a huge part of that. Today, we're gonna be talking about the four stages of discipline and how it relates to self-determination theory. And I've talked a little bit about self-determination theory on my Instagram page and in my new free ebook. These are actually our basic psychological needs that allow us to foster a good connection to our goals. And these three basic psychological needs are autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Firstly, we need to feel in control of our own life. We need to feel like we are the ones that are making the decisions that are best for us and that nobody else behind the scenes is pulling the strings. Next, we need to feel competent. We need to feel like what we're working towards actually makes sense for our lives and we have enough intelligence to achieve that goal. And not just intelligence, but mastery. We need to feel like we are the master of this topic or of this goal. This is precisely why a lot of us give up when we start something 
something new because we don't feel like we're competent enough to do it. And as soon as we feel some type of failure or tinge of stupidity, our ego gets in the way and then we stop trying. And number three, we need to feel related to others. We need to feel like other people aren't judging us for trying to achieve what we're doing. We also need to feel a sense of connection and belonging within what we're trying to achieve. Because in reality, not everyone's opinion matters. And I feel like a lot of us can acknowledge, I don't care about what a stranger thinks about me, but if it's a stranger within your own field or what you're trying to get into, then you might think, oh, well, they know more than me. And how this relates to motivation is when one area is lacking, it pollutes all the other areas, causing us to feel things like imposter syndrome, insecurity, and even giving up on our dreams. We settle with where we're at because we're too scared to actually take on the responsibilities and the discomfort of trying something new. Humans thrive with a balance of two key factors, certainty and uncertainty. We want to feel certain and that we're actually able to achieve what we want, but we also want to feel a little bit of uncertainty and spice to our life. Too much uncertainty can cause us to be thrown off balance because we're just being pushed in the deep end and we feel like we're drowning because we don't know enough, but too much certainty can make us feel like we're settling in life. What am I missing, right? And that's what so many of us get caught up in, especially in our early 20s. There's so many things available to us and once we stick to one thing, we assume that we just have to go with that one thing and we don't want to change our minds or else we don't feel competent, which then affects our motivation, which then makes us feel like we're never going to achieve anything in life, which then doesn't make us feel related to others and etc. Finding a balance between all these key factors is literally the key to life. And I want you to remember that that reality exists. You're not going to have this feeling of inadequacy forever. It's just something that comes once in a while to remind you that we are all on a learning journey. And sometimes that feeling of inadequacy is meant to push you to do something new and to get out of your comfort zone. The first stage of self-discipline is awareness. Being aware of what the actual problem is. I want you to take out a sheet of paper and ask yourself what part of your life when it comes to this goal is lacking right? Do you feel like you're not related to a group of people? Do you feel incompetent? Do you feel like you're not the one making the decisions in your own life? We can't fix a problem if we're not aware of it. So identify your triggers and identify the things that are really causing this feeling of inadequacy. Another thing I really want to talk about when it comes to motivation is a lot of us don't understand that there are two different types of motivation. Number one is intrinsic motivation that comes from our desire to expand in life. Sometimes you're called to certain things and you don't understand why, but you just feel like this is what I meant to do. When you think intrinsic, think internal satisfaction and growth. Conversely, there's extrinsic motivation, which is actually what a lot of us are used to feeling. Extrinsic motivation plays on our reward system, essentially punishments and rewards for what we do. There's also negative motivation, which is essentially trying to avoid negative reinforcement through punishments. For example, you might be motivated to to make more money and go towards your goals because there's certain people who don't like you or don't believe in you, which gives you more motivation. That is an example of negative motivation. It's still coming from an extrinsic standpoint though. What you must understand is extrinsic motivation can only get you so far. A lot of us are not looking for this short-term reward that we think we want. We are looking for that long-term fulfillment that we've always desired, which is why no matter what we achieve, no matter no matter what we do, we feel this emptiness inside. And this is connected back to the autonomy principle of self-determination theory. It does not matter what you get if you don't feel like you're in control of your own life and choices. You're not going to stay intrinsically motivated when all you're thinking about is the external validation or motivation that you're receiving. Step number two is control. Once you identified what is not working in your life, you need to understand another principle. Self-sabotage isn't actually what you think it is. You think you go back to these negative patterns as a self-sabotage, but it's actually a comfort. This negative habit or this negative thing that you don't want in your life anymore is feeding into a certain part of yourself. It's giving you a sense of comfort in some way. And what's crazy is our brain can actually be wired to find comfort in chaos, especially if that's how you were raised. This is also why 
why awareness is so important when it comes to leveling up in your life because if you're not aware of how your past has impacted your current outlook on life, you're not going to be able to solve those bad habits because you're not going to be aware that this chaos is actually your comfort zone. Lucky for you, I made a comprehensive ebook that goes into how to level up your life in 30 days. There's shadow work prompts and resources in order to become your best self. It goes into all of what I'm talking about in today's video, but if you're trying to break a bad habit and gain motivation for the bad habit, you need to bring yourself back to your purpose. Before you start eliminating this bad habit, you need to identify what the purpose is of getting rid of this bad habit and how it relates to your comfort zone. For example, with these vape devices, right, you might have a temporary sense of relief when you hit the vape. And also recognizing that it is literally wired into your brain to enjoy positive feelings. There are chemicals that are going off in your brain that are making you feel good. So understand that the biological aspect of it plays a huge role in why we attach ourselves to bad habits. Create a mantra. So this is something you do when you want to do your bad habit. Mine is no and then what? It's very simple because you're telling yourself no and then you're asking and prompting yourself to do something different. You're becoming aware of the stimulus that is making you feel the anxiety and then you're choosing to tell yourself no in order to get through it in a different way because your brain sees this habit as a solution or temporary relief to what you're currently feeling. If it is starved of that habit, your brain is going to form other habits to replace it, which is why you need a replacement. You need something to do in order to distract yourself. And you also need moderation. Sometimes you can't cold turkey, right? Sometimes you can get like a locker or something to put your vape device in. Go about your day, make it inconvenient for you to do your bad habit. Positive alternatives are really, really important to actually gain motivation to get rid of bad habits. So if you relate to the scenario I just said, today's sponsor literally helps you with that. Moving on to number three of self-discipline is habit formation. To actually get rid of bad habits, you need to replace them with better habits. The biggest mistake that a lot of people do when they start to break bad habits is they assume their extrinsic motivation is going to get them to where they need to be, therefore they overload themselves and they set themselves up for failure by doing that. Which is why instead, I want you to apply a concept of progressive overload. Instead of doing things all at once, you need to take them on week by week because when you overwhelm yourself and feel like you have to do this whole big thing it's like you're looking up this huge mountain and you're like how am I gonna climb this it's a lot more difficult instead think about this is how many miles I'm going to walk on this day and as you go on and as you train you're going to be able to withstand more over time back in 2021 I took my first ever weight training class and one of the main things that I was taught was Kaizen or continuous improvement. When I first started the gym, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no previous sports backgrounds. I was literally that girl who would walk the mile in PE. When I tell you I didn't have an athletic bone in my body, I mean it. But I knew I wanted to feel and be the best version of myself. So I enrolled in this class and I was feeling like I had to do all of this stuff at once and learn all of these crazy different things. But then they taught me about Kaizen. It's essentially just doing a little bit more each time. And that's what I want you to remember when it comes to your new habits that are forming. Start with the intrinsic motivation and the purpose of why you're doing something and then expand on that. Use the external motivation of your dream body or getting complimented, making more money, whatever. Use that motivation to start, but then pick back up on the intrinsic motivation when you feel down, when you feel like you can't go anymore. Learn habit looping. Every single habit starts with the same three-step pattern. First, there's the cue. There's the thing that triggers things to kick off. Then comes the routine. This is actually doing the thing. And finally, there's the reward. Having a mantra would be the cue that makes you form the habit. Choosing to perform a better behavior and replace it is the routine. And then rewarding yourself for the good habit is the biggest part. Because if your brain doesn't associate positive good chemicals with this new habit you're trying to form, there's going to be 
resistance because the bad habit feels better. Your comfort zone feels more familiar. And even though it's not better and you know continuing to do the bad habit is going to inevitably cause your demise, there's a part of you that's still really, really attached to that bad habit and to that comfort zone because you haven't created positive associations with your new reality you want to step into or the new habit you want to form. Think about it when it comes to social media. Your phone buzzes, so you check the app. Subsequently, you get a reward or a dopamine hit just for checking that notification. Your brain is constantly looking for ways to save energy. And when it finds a pattern that works, it uses it until it can't anymore. And that's why controlling it is so important and creating something that's a little bit better is the most important. You can still use the things that make you feel good as positive reinforcements. For example, giving yourself a certain amount of time to scroll on social media after making sure you do what you need to do. But you can't break the good habit with the bad habit. For example, if you're studying, as soon as you feel yourself reaching for your phone, you need to put your phone in the other room and have enough self-control and determination to recognize why you don't want to do it and bring yourself back to that purpose. My purpose is to graduate. My purpose is to have a good grade in this class. And although scrolling on social media or texting my friends back would feel good, I haven't done enough work for it to actually be rewarding. This relates to the competence part of self-determination theory because the more you feel competent and able, you'll stop feeling like you're not in control of your own life and you'll stop feeling stupid for going on your phone. You'll start to see the bad habit for what it actually is a distraction. Every single week when you do just a little bit more than you did the week before, you are gaining more positive association with the new habit you want to do. Most people know that habits take about two weeks to form. So within the first week, I want you to just introduce this concept. Don't do too much, right? See how it feels to actually stick to a certain habit. The second week, you're going to up the intensity just a little bit more. And by the third week, you are going to be at high intensity intensity. That way, instead of feeling like, oh my god, I'm so overwhelmed with all of these new habits, you're doing it little by little to increase your bandwidth for this habit that you need to solidify in your life. Another thing that's really helpful is feeling related to other people, which is why you need an accountability system. If someone else is trying to quit their bad habit, you need to form an alliance with them. And I know that sounds so silly, but when you have other people that are pushing you, it'll feel a lot better over time. This is why a lot of people have gym partners that they go to the gym with because you're pushing each other to keep going. Whereas if you went with yourself, you're probably just going to half-ass it and then leave. Community plays a huge role in self-determination theory because a lot of us are not motivated just by ourselves. We are social creatures and we need to feel like what we're doing is actually contributing to something in some way, shape, or form. These good habits that you're implementing aren't just affecting you. They're affecting everyone else around you because you get Getting rid of that bad habit and implementing new habits will make you more productive at work, will make you a better friend, will make you feel a lot less tired and exhausted. You'll have a lot more bandwidth to withstand difficulties. You see how it's all coming together now? And finally, stage four of discipline is when it's automatic to you. This is when the behavior and the good habit is actually fully formed. And a lot of you are like, okay, well, the habit's formed. It's done, right? But honestly, it's not because a lot of the times when you continue to do a habit and it's second nature to you, you'll also go back into that bad habit for like maybe one more time and you'll recognize how out of alignment you are with that pattern. For example, for me, it feels so weird to not go to the gym. Even when I'm on vacation, I just like moving my body in some way, even if it's not like a super hard gym day. Being active has become such a huge part of my life that when I don't work out, I actually feel worse about myself and my mental state is just not as good as when I work out. And this is when intrinsic motivation plays the biggest part because you start to see how this good habit is actually affecting every single part of your life. And these small habits that you form are actually adding up to your bigger purpose. Everything is interrelated to that purpose and to your true soul's calling. If you feel like you wanna change something, that desire is enough. It's just simply the steps in order to get there and creating those positive associations with new, better habits in your life. Because that transition from a bad habit to a new habit isn't going to feel as daunting as before, especially if you implement the progressive overload concept I was talking about earlier. 
Even if you didn't do everything you set out to do, acknowledging what you did do and trying again is the most important thing. You're going to fail at some points. There are going to be days where you just don't have it in you. Nobody has unlimited willpower. Instead of assuming that discipline is this big, huge, scary monster where it's like discipline, it's like so daunting, think of it as devotion to your goals and to your true soul's purpose. With that being said, besties, thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode of the Improvement for Imbeciles podcast. If this video helped you, please be sure to give this video a big, huge thumbs up and subscribe. I know a lot of you who view my videos are not subscribed, so make sure you subscribe and turn on those bell notifications. If you made it to the end of the video, comment some habits that you want to form this 2025. I would love to hear what you want to set out to do, so start thinking about it, you know, even if it's something small or even if it's something big. Be sure to go try Fume at tryfume.com slash etched. Use my code etched. Thank you so much, Fume, for sponsoring today's video, and with that being said, besties, I'll see you guys in the next one.